Welcome to another video on anatomy. In this video, we will be discussing about the direct and indirect pathways of the basal ganglia. On a daily basis, we perform thousands of movements from walking to writing to grabbing a cup of coffee and so many other skill-based works. Did it ever cross your mind that what in the brain is actually responsible for organizing and smoothening all these tasks? The answer to that question lies within the structure called basal ganglia. Two major pathways emerge from the basal ganglia, which project onto various structures of the brain communicating with them. They are called the direct or the excitatory and the indirect or the inhibitory pathways. The basal ganglia are a part of the extrapyramidal system and they participate in the movement modulation. Input signals from the cerebral cortex are received, processed within the basal ganglia. After that, it will create a focused output signal that ends up within the motor neurons of the frontal lobe and the brainstem. These signals serve for planning and proper execution of a movement. Unlike the cerebellum, basal ganglia do not receive input signals from the spinal cord, but they are directly connected to the cerebral cortex. From the striatum, the two main pathways from the basal ganglia arise, which are called the direct and indirect pathways. The direct pathway begins in the cortex and follows the following pathway. Please pay close attention to it. it begins from the cortex, travels to the striatum, to the globus pallidus internus and substantia nigra pars reticularis, to the thalamus and eventually closing it back to the cortex. This loop or this pathway is excitatory, which means it promotes movement. Now let's see individual components of this pathway. The direct pathway starts from the cortex to the striatum. Now remember that striatum is comprised of caudate nucleus and putamen. This pathway from the cortex to the striatum is excitatory. The neurons of the striatum are activated by the input signals from the cortex by the neurotransmitter called glutamate. These neurons which are activated in the striatum are inhibitory neurons which use the gamma amino butyric acid as their main inhibitory neurotransmitter. The axons from the striatum reach the globus pallidus internus and substantia nigra pars reticularis. So the pathway from the striatum all the way to the globus pallidus internus is inhibitory. The neurons from the globus pallidus internus and substantia nigra pars reticularis send their axons to the thalamus. And remember that even these neurons are inhibitory type. These fibers going from the globus pallidus to the thalamus form two fascicles of white matter called the ansa lenticularis and the lenticular fasciculus that before entering the thalamus fuse into one pathway called the thalamic fasciculus. Now hence, the pathway from the globus pallidus internus to the thalamus is again inhibitory pathway. From the thalamus, excitatory pathways go to the cortex, which is the prefrontal and the premotor and the supplementary areas of the cortex. These excitatory pathways affect the planning of the movement by synapsing with the neurons of the corticospinal and the corticobulbar tracts. Thus, the tract from the thalamus to the motor cortex is excitatory. Note that functionally, the first and the last one are excitatory, whereas the second and the third are inhibitory. This is very important to understand the function of the basal ganglia. This entire system works on a positive feedback mechanism. And the question arises is how? Well, because two of the inhibitory synapses are connected one after another, the first inhibitory neuron 
which is striatum, suppresses the activity of the second inhibitory neuron, which is the globus pallidus. Due to this, there will be a reduction of inhibitory influence of the globus pallidus or the thalamus. So, there will be a disinhibition of the thalamus, which is equivalent to the excitation of the motor cortex. That is, a negative of negative resulting in a positive. So, the general function of the direct pathway of the basal ganglia is to excite the motor cortex or to increase the motor activity. Now let's take a look at the indirect pathway. The indirect pathway also begins in the cortex and proceeds as follows. The indirect pathway starts from the cortex, travels to the striatum, travels to the globus pallidus externus, further on to involve the subthalamic nuclei, and then comes back to the globus pallidus internus and the substantia nigra pars reticulata, eventually terminating into thalamus and back to the cortex. Now this loop or circuit is inhibitory, which means it inhibits the movement. Unlike the direct pathway, which is excitatory, wherein it promotes movement. Now let's get into the details of indirect pathway step by step. The indirect pathway starts from the cortex to the striatum. This pathway from the cortex to the striatum is excitatory. It activates the inhibitory neurons within the striatum. The inhibitory neurons from the striatum synapses with the external segment of the globus pallidus. The neurons of the external segment of the globus pallidus sense inhibitory fibers to the subthalamus. Additionally, the subthalamus sends excitatory projections back to the globus pallidus internus and the substantia nigra pars reticulata. So functionally, the striatum inhibits the globus pallidus externus and that causes a disinhibition of the subthalamus. Now for this reason, the neurons of the subthalamus become more active and they excite the internal segment of the globus pallidus. So finally, this loop inhibits the thalamic nuclei. The end result of this pathway is a decreased activity of the cortical motor neurons and a consequential suppression of the extemporaneous movement. Now it is thought that the direct pathway promotes voluntary movement in targeted muscles, whereas the indirect pathway simultaneously inhibits the movement in other muscles that do not contribute to the overall wanted movement. The result is a coordinated, smooth movement in which those muscles necessary for the desired movement are recruited, while the other muscles that might affect the throw-off of the desired movement are inhibited.